In this video, I want to go through an example of solving one-step equations. Before we get started, one of the things that I want to point out is an equation must have an equal sign. Everything that we've dealt with prior to this, or most of what we dealt with, um, have been expressions which do not have equal signs. And when we solve an equation, we have to use inverse operations or opposite operations. So for example, addition and subtraction are opposites or inverses of each other, and multiplication and division are also opposites or inverses of each other. And then anytime we wanna solve an equation, we're gonna start by drawing a line vertically through the equal sign. And the reason for that is it gives us a reminder that whatever I do to one side of that line or one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side because I want to keep my equation balanced. Once I do that, the next piece, I always tell students, if you can read the equation starting with a variable, then it really helps you to be able to solve it. So I want to identify my variable, which is the letter in this case is X. And then I want to read that equation starting with a variable, only that side of the equal sign. So I would read that as x plus 2.4. And I'm going to write that over to the side. Now with one-step equations, it's pretty straightforward. There's only one operation, so you're like, what's the point of writing it out? I really believe it helps, especially as you get into two-step and multi-step equations. So if you get in the habit now, it will help you. And I'm going to point out the variable is what you read first, because then you're going to work backwards and do the opposite. So in this case, x plus 2.4 plus or addition is the current operation. So then the inverse or the opposite is going to be subtraction. So really what I want to do is subtract 2.4 from both sides of my equal sign or my equation. So on the left, I want to make sure it lines up with the 2.4 since that's what I have there. So positive 2.4 minus 2.4 equals zero. So that essentially cancels it out. But if I do it on the left side of my equal sign, or my vertical line, I have to do it on the other side. So minus 2.4. So then on this side, all I have left is x. So I'm just going to drop that down with my equal sign. And then I want to actually solve what is 11 minus 2.4, which in this case is 8.6. And that's my answer. But if you want to check to make sure that you have it correct, we can go back to what we did in the last lesson and substitute it back into the original equation to see if it's going to give us a correct result and that both sides are actually equal. So if I take 2.4 plus x equals 11, and in this case my x is what I just found, which is 8.6, I want to substitute that in place of my x in this equation. And then combine like terms or solve it. So 2.4 plus 8.6, if I check that, it is going to equal 11. So then I'm looking at does 11 equal 11? And it does, so that proves that my answer is correct. So I would definitely encourage you to check your answers um, really all the time, but especially on a test or a quiz, because then you're guaranteed that you know you got those questions right. So let's look at one more example. So both of these examples are coming from the notes that are posted um, in Empower for you. So we're going to start the same way. Draw a vertical line through my equal sign. And then 
I want to read this starting with my variable. So again, my variable in this case is the y. And now my variable and everything is on the right hand side. It doesn't matter which side of the equal sign it is. Um, you could even flip the two sides if you wanted, if that makes it easier for you to understand. So you could rewrite this as negative 2.5y equals 24 if you always like to have the variable on the left. But we're going to go ahead and read this. So one of the big things is remember that if your variable is next to the number, the operation between those is multiplication. So if I read that, it's actually y times negative 2.5. So the current operation is multiplication. So then the inverse is going to be division. So I want to divide by negative 2.5. The other thing I want to point out is it's always the operation that changes, not the sign. So this is a negative, so that stays with your number. Now before, if it would have read y minus 2.5, then the opposite of minus is plus. So you have to just be careful of what your operation is. So if I want to divide this on both sides, remember the fraction bar is the same as division. So I'm going to use that. So divided by negative 2.5 and then also divide this side by negative 2.5. And however I read it is how I would divide it or how I would put in my calculator. So on the left, it says 24 divided by negative 2.5. So I need to put that in that order in the calculator, and that's going to give me negative 9.6. Now in this case, these are inverses of each other, so I know that they're gonna cancel out, but what that really means is negative 2.5 divided by negative 2.5 actually equals one. So it would become one y. And then I know one y is the same thing as just y because I always know there's an imaginary one. So you could make that one um, just disappear because these are the same. So my answer equals negative 9.6. And another thing, like once you do the operation, you could then cross it off here to show that the last thing that's left is your variable, especially when we get to two-step and multi-step equations. And then again, you could check this by substituting negative 9.6 back in for your y and then multiply those to make sure that you're going to get 24.